everybody, dear friends of Southern Barber, welcome to this new episode of our podcast, The Coming Road. With me, as always, my friend Claudio and Dr. Davide Yazzarelli. This time, dear friends, we have a special guest, and this time, the guest comes from the far lands of Japan, and he is one of the strongest bench presser in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have the pleasure to be with Suzuki Yusuke. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. I just finished benching today. Really? So, yeah, I'm kind of tired, but I'm really excited. And uh, thank you for inviting me to this great opportunity. And uh, yeah, it's, it's few and far between. So, I hope we can, we all can get. Uh, something out of it. It's a pleasure for us. So now we're going to start and we're going to make you some questions. And please, yeah. Claudio, you can start with our podcast. Yes. Uh, hi, Suke. Uh, first of all, um, thank you. Thank you so much for agreeing to, to be with us. Um, uh, first of all, how are you and uh, um, how is the, the situation there in, uh, in Japan? Um, um, I mean the the the, the COVID emergency. Uh, we we used to see you uh, training uh, wearing the mask uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the gym. So uh, we we um, have a personal uh, garage gym, but uh, in Italian gyms the the, the situation is uh, a little bit different. So tell mm -hmm. us how is the situation there uh, in uh, Japanese gyms. Okay. How is the situation? Uh, uh, um, in terms of coronavirus, it's kind of getting worse again, like it's a second wave. So that's, that's why I, I was supposed to wear the masks, you know, mm. during uh, you know, training. And uh, yeah, it's tighter, let's say, like a number of uh, PSL positive is getting increasing, and uh, so that we are not going out. Like you know, we're not we are not supposed to travel around. So mm -hmm. that's why we don't have a bench worlds. You know, and the other other gym is kind of same, like. This area is kind of a rural place, so we are not really serious about it. But like you know, big city in Tokyo or Osaka is really worse. And yeah, it, this situation we haven't been here. Like this is for the first time in my life, so we are really getting confused. Okay, okay. Um, so. Um let's uh, let's talk about bench <laughs> let's talk about bench press finally um, <laughs> my <laughs> my my first question about uh, about bench press uh, um is uh, about uh, your grip okay, grip? It, uh, okay. It's, it, it it seems that you um, used to do uh, medium grip bench press uh, mm -hmm. okay 90 percent of times uh, and uh, um, you also uh, use it in competition. So yeah. um, my, my question is: um, It is uh, um, is it uh, due to uh, some uh, um, shoulder problem or uh, issues, um, an injury or some pain, uh, a kind of pain, uh, uh, or just um, for for the, the the major hypertrophic? Uh, uh, gains it gives, for example, on uh, arms, uh, on triceps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in terms, I mean, in the wake of my injury, it was in 2015, I teared my pec. So, okay. at the time, I was yeah. doing a white grip, like, you know, all of the pictures do. But since then, I I cannot do this. So I switched to medium grip or narrow grip. So even for competition. And I found that it's much easier to get increase my bench press number 
and also the white grip is kind of technical so I have to put all my effort in that technique so I'm I, I think I'm not our uh, technique orientated so yeah I just because it's easy mm -hmm. Okay, so medium grip, uh, um, uh, in, your, in uh, your opinion, uh, it is uh, um, easy, more easy uh, to yeah. than uh, the, the white grip. Uh, okay, and uh, um, would you recommend white grip to everyone um, as a competition grip uh, mm -hmm. on bench press? Or, um, for example, uh, are there um, any subjects that uh, um, uh, we'll, we'll do more kilos uh, with a medium grip. For example, uh, people with uh, long arms, uh, or uh, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It, it, it depends on their uh, like frame. It depends on the skeleton. And uh, yeah, I, I would say, I recommend a narrow grip or medium grip for nine out of 10 lifters because uh, usually we are not really meant to be like doing white grip. It's, it's very complicated and um, it takes so long time to get the hang of it. So, and it's more, it has more risk to get injured because uh, all, all different parts is related to other part, parts, then if, if I screw up, like even for a single joint, then it's gonna <laughs> fall apart. So, and I'll say, and therefore I don't want people to get injured, so, I would say narrow grip is for your training, then wide grip is just for competition. Huh. So, I mean, it, it should be done at the last minute, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a certain period of time, like for two weeks or three weeks, then after the competition, you just need to go back to the narrow grip again. Okay. Okay. For example, for example, personally, I um, I managed to do uh, white grip. Uh, I mm. think uh, uh, perfectly one one time a month. <laughs> for example, <laughs> I, I I feel I used to feel more comfortable uh, narrow grip than the yeah. white grip. So I I, I I understand. I understand. Yeah, and then the narrow grip is more like simple it's really merely it just depends on the strength you know what i mean yeah. then yeah. it's really easy to get engaged the core and the back strength so that it's it creates more elastic force so it means like you know uh when you push the bar back to the top position it's so much easier and uh, and how say like okay thank you it's hard to mess up yeah it's hard to mess up okay okay it's clear so now we have a question for you um yeah. we see pretty often you bench pressing without touching the chest on purpose stopping like at two centimeters from the chest, and then yeah. we see you doing this while you don't touch the bench with your ass. And then, as we yeah, see yeah, you yeah. during the competition, you do bench press perfectly, uh, mm -hmm. staying in the rules of the competition. So, my question is how comes that? Why do you do this? And how can you bench press? Stay in the lines of the rules of the competition during your meet. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the most mysterious parts of my bench press. I mean, like, you know, for a training, I have to do that really uh, 
frequently. Like four days or five days a week, I do bench press. And if I keep my butt on the bench, then it's much easier to get fatigue. So then that fatigue causes injury. So I'm just trying to avoid it. And then for like before the competition, before three weeks, I modify it for like a competitive style. And it's, it's kind of easy for me to modify it. Sure. And how about the, uh, the, the fact that you stop before the chest? Okay, okay. It actually it requires a lot more effort to stop in the middle of the uh, bar path. So then in that way, I can feel my back is working properly and my triceps or elbows position is like adequate. But if I touch the chest, like if I put the bar on the chest and then like kind of getting relaxed, it's, it's much harder to uh, make the position properly. So it's, it's like yeah, in, in, intentionally I do that because I want to feel if there is something right or something wrong. You got it? To check my form. Okay. I'm um, hey, sorry, hey, I cannot hey. hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, sorry. I think that David has something to ask you about yes. uh, the stop uh, in the middle related to the mm -hmm. board press. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> hi, Yuzuke. Okay. And hi. I, hi. And I want to ask you because I agree with you uh, lifting the butt from the bench instead mm -hmm. of using a board press. And uh, I want to know if your opinion is similar to mine. I mean, using a board press, uh, I mm -hmm. think that uh, your chest is forced uh, to be uh, low. If you don't, if you lift the butt mm -hmm. and you don't use the board, you can mm -hmm. uh, keep the uh, tension of your mm -hmm. shoulder being mm -hmm. muscles and you can mm -hmm. control the weight better. Uh, are you, do you agree with me? Yeah, I do, I do. I, I actually finished today's training and then training was a pin press, like a floor press. Yeah, I choose one of those for a day, daily training. Then the pin press is one of the most for like, you know, building a big chest tension or the back engagement. So I'm not really caring about my butt comes off the bench, but still it's, it's useful to enhance my ability of pressing back. And uh, about the uh, touch and go or the bench press with the stop, because in Italy, some people uh, say that uh, every rep on, on the bench press should be with the, uh, the stop, not okay. just the touch and go. But in my opinion, when the fatigue is high, it is impossible some days uh, to keep the, the stop. Do mm -hmm. you agree? Yeah, I, I think it's much safer if you uh, pause on the chest because it's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna affect your elbow position if you stop the bar at the top of the chest. But it depends on the period, how, what period you are in. Like if you're in a hypertrophic period, yeah, you can do like touch and go flat so that, you know, you can get straight to your chest on your chest. And then that causes a lot of hypertrophy again. Then, but for competition, I mean, it requires a lot more uh, accuracy. Accuracy. Yeah, to control your bar. So it, it, it really depends on what kind of period you are in. Okay. And um, another question about uh, your fingers. Uh, that mm -hmm. grab the bar because I I noticed that uh, like like me your your fingers like uh, grab the bar but they don't destroy the bar I mean 
the bar is comfortable on the on the hand. So mm -hmm. I think that why do you do this for um, in order to uh, keep more uh, control on your shoulder mm -hmm. blades? Um, it's very complicated to explain, but I'm I'm not really grabbing the bar. I'm just like slightly grasping the bar and with my fingertip. So in order to, you know, the bar stays in the same position. And then I'm slightly bending my wrist to, I, to get my shoulders, blades involved in, you know, making the position. And also I want to get my foot related to my finger tip. So the end of the body like this and uh, like my hand or foot can get connected with this grip. But if I grab the bar really, really strongly, like, so the tension goes to the forearms and then some, sometimes it's kind of too much so that the bar, the bar part is not really ideal. Yes, and uh, another question because some some people here in Italy uh, say that uh, bending the bar is a mistake. But in my opinion, bending the bar uh, uh, allo allowed you to uh, depress the shoulder blades better and uh, activate the lower traps better. What do you think yeah, about yeah. it? Yeah, I'm totally agree with you. I'm. I mean, I, I think we are on the same page. Like it's a it's kind of trying to bend the bar so that you can keep the upper arms external rotation and that external rotation creates the shoulder blades depressed and then that creates your arms much higher i think so yes thank you mm. um related to uh, the previous topic uh, uh, about uh, not touching the chest with uh, with the barbell mm -hmm. and uh, uh, bench pressing bottom up. Uh, um, uh, very often um, we uh, there are your uh, training videos uh, in which uh, um, you uh, really go so close uh, to failure. Okay, and mm -hmm. um, sometimes you need a spotter. Okay, to help you in the last repetition. Mm -hmm. um, uh, related with the uh, pre uh, with the previous uh, with the previous uh, discussion, um, it it seems that uh, you um, uh, in a certain way you try to uh, taste uh, okay a, um, a certain load in order to um, um, uh, I mean um, uh, in order to do that uh, in uh, a more comfort uh, in a more comfortable way in, um, uh, and uh, then uh, um, slowly gaining confidence with uh, with it uh, and uh, with uh, with time you try to clean up that load uh, until you manage to do um, that load with uh, respecting all rules okay it depends on how i accumulate my hypertrophy period it's, mm -hmm. okay my longer is more difficult but usually my hypertrophy period is less than two months so i need to modify that you know like like a bench press to complete the bench press or like it, it requires about three weeks for example, um, what were 200, uh, 210 kilos? Okay, for example, mm -hmm. um, initially you don't uh, be able to do that uh, mm -hmm. that load, but uh, um, so uh, initially you try to do that load in a more comfortable way. So bottom up, uh, w w without touching the chest, and then uh, you uh, you. You you, uh, you will manage to do that weight that load in a perfect way, so respecting uh, all rules, all rules, and uh, um, so I mean I mean this, okay. 
is it true? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Just a minute. Is, is what true? What do you mean by uh, is it true? You do uh, think on purpose. I mean, is this the purpose for that you do this way? You treat the weights this way before the competition. So you stay mm -hmm. with your ass up. Uh, you don't touch mm -hmm. the, the chest. Uh, you do this in order to man, to uh, master the weight until you are able to do that, uh, sticking to the rules of the competition. Oh, uh, no, okay, okay, okay. Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. So why do you does what do you got up? Mm -hmm. Does it allow you to master it? To be higher. Mm -hmm. To the point where you mm -hmm. can jump at once you've done that good number. Down. What we're talking about. We we just wanna know if uh, you are agree with us and mm -hmm. uh, if uh, it uh, it uh, could be a strategy. <laughs> Is it a good strategy? Yeah, I think so. It's it's one of my biggest tactics to you know avoid getting injury. And okay, I, okay, you know, okay, okay. Maybe you you might be aware of that. It's high risk if you keep going with your comp competitive style. So it's like a perfect form. It requires a hundred percent of your your ability. So you cannot you know keep going with at your maximum ability. So mm -hmm. it, I, I think it's very, uh, it's a huge com contribution for my bench press to get a higher number to is uh, that my butt off and then put chest, don't touch the chest. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I, I can get used to it, and I can get used to it. Like, you know, I can get used to this and uh, that uh, big numbers, and then my neural pathways will be created by that kind of number. And my estimation for the competition is kind of lower than my previous uh, possibility. Like, if I go up to like 230 or 235 in the gym, then I expect that I can get like 220 or 225 at the competition. So I know how to modify it and I know it decreases my number of bench press. So it's, it, it, I, I know my perspective is very really perfect. It, 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 and um, yeah, it, it's, it's based, it's based on my experience so um, I'm, I'm totally agree with you okay and uh, I wanna uh, I wanna ask you uh, about uh, leg drive I leg mean drive. in my opinion of course uh, leg drive uh, is useful in order to lift more weight but mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. my opinion leg drive is useful uh, to um, allow the chest going up during the eccentric phase because mm -hmm. the, if you press with your with your feet on the ground, your chest yep. goes up. What do you think mm -hmm. about it? And do you use leg drive in this way? Yeah, uh, definitely I use leg drive and I'm really glad I'm going. Uh, leg drive is so huge. So it's, I think the bench press position starts from the leg. So if you put your foot, on the ground properly so that then your arch will be really good. Then I, I'm i really into kinetic, kinetic chain. So leg drive is also a big part of the kinetic chain. Mm -hmm. So that once shoulder blade get depressed, then you have to push it back with your pelvis. So that with what pushes a pelvis is leg. Okay, then the leg drive should be included automatically with your bench press. So I'm not really emphasizing that leg 
drive because it's a part of my body and uh, I I I want to I want to use whole part of my body so the leg drive is is it's um, it's useful but not the special one I think yeah we all have to we all have to use that for bench press or so otherwise you know you cannot use your kinetic chain correctly and uh, then your back your back part or core engagement will be falling apart so you cannot you know, control the bar when you when uh, while the descent it should be balanced with the rest of the parts of your bench press and not over emphasized not over emphasized balanced. it's in uh, yeah it's balanced it should be balanced yeah so i'm gonna make you another question recently yep. we saw in the video and we we shared the the video through our um instagram account we tagged you on it uh we saw a, a particular uh variation of the bench press in which a spotter uh push the bar uh, down with a plate uh, repeatedly yeah, yeah. so it's not the first time that we see you doing weird things with the barbell and using yeah. uh, weird barbells as well. So my question is, uh, how do you approach with the uh, variation of the bench press and which one are your favorites and, uh, um, mm -hmm. and which kind of special barbells do you use in your bench press routine? Mm. So the, the when I was like 28 years old, I found that that plate gave me a lot, like to activate my neural uh, nerve nerve systems. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, if you uh, exclude the uh, plate while you know, pushing the bar back, it, it, it's literally lighter than you know, your descent. So it's very easy and very safety, and uh, also it, it, it gives you a very uh, confident with that heavier weight. If you can lower the bar with a perfect form, so that you can push the bar back, it, 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 it's much easier. But you cannot do that frequently, and uh, you cannot do that with the uh, real heavy weight. So I like, like I say, not to say. What I do, Mokushai. Intentionally, I want that bar heavier. Feel heavier than yeah. Feel feel heavier than what it is, and then yeah, it's it's one of the it's just one of the variations of my bench press. So I'm not really uh, I'm not really thinking of it's important and it's necessary, but still it's activate your nervous system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the variations of bench press can be anything like you can uh, you can change the grips with or you can do that on the floor or you can do that with you know feet up so that kind of various aspects of bench press will help you on the competition so you if you know how to do this how to do that you know you have very variety of uh, thinking experiences that helps you a lot when you you know accidentally get stuck in the middle of the uh, and then that the special bubble is called T grip angle bar and uh, this one is really I say like it's neutral neutral so i can do that naturally 
my position and elbows or my back engagement is uh, it's so much easier to get them connected without thinking that, mm -hmm. or just feel it and it's more it's more useful for your hypertrophy period as well mm. because so you can you can do bench press without you know getting hurt and uh, bench press bench press is really counterintuitive because we are not doing things with you know when we are lying down so we have to find more natural way to use our body. And that bar helps a lot for that. You know, you don't have to be really careful about, you have to be careful, like your grip is okay, or you, your elbow is okay, like, you know, any part of, any kind of that worrying will, you know, it, it, it is less stressful. Okay. 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 And uh, I, I highly recommend you to do this. Yeah. yeah. As soon as we can, we're going to buy one of that thing. <laughs> so, and then, you know, uh, variety is key. Variety is key. Variety is key. And uh, can I talk again? Yeah, of course. <laughs> like, like that variation gives you a lot of stimulation as well. Mm -hmm. And we have to adapt for that stimulation in a certain time. Then during that time, we can get, uh, we can get improved with, because of uh, thanks to that stimulation. But it's kind of easy to get adopted because, you know, we love bench press and we know how to bench press and then that stimulation is not really different, you know, even though we do a white grip or narrow grip. So then I realized that I cannot change the bar angle. Like these are all straight. You know, it's slight different, like like thicker or thinner, uh, or softer or harder, like a stiff bar, then that bar is totally different. Like my with my 20 years of experience, it's the first time to bench press with that grip. So that's a huge stimulation. Okay, okay, okay. it's clear. Um, another question is uh, um, about uh, the other two movement of uh, of powerlifting. Um, <laughs> Uh, a question we used to ask all the bench specialists. What is your relationship with the squat uh, and deadlift? Uh, um, do you used to train uh, them? And uh, I don't know, how, how much are they important to you? Um, so, to be honest, I, I prefer squat to deadlift. Like, the sport has a lot of similarity when you like, when you get into the position. Like you, your shoulder blades get depressed, and uh, your chest much wide open, and your pelvis angle is kind of similar to bench press. On the other hand, the bed deadlift is like anterior strength. Okay, okay, okay. It's so much easier to get fatigue or get injury unless you have perfect form and i don't have much time to get that perfect form for deadlift so yeah i prefer squat and a squat gives you a lot more strength on the lower part of your body and that uh, that momentum from bottom to the top and the timing when you put uh, when you reinforce Power. Brace yourself. Brace yourself. Is 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 very similar to bench press as well. So the squat is one of my biggest go-to exercises yeah, when I get stuck in the bench press. Okay. 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 So um, 
want to talk about the bench press in Japan. Bench mm -hmm. press in Japan, uh, at least for for what we see, mm -hmm. uh, thanks to the web, is yep. uh, like an art. So it's treated um, like an art with all the due respect. So um, we noticed a, a, a difference between uh, the bench, your bench press, for example, and the one of, for example, Kodama or Fukushima, for example. Mm -hmm. They are not as big as you, and yeah. they don't even have a small rum like, for example, Matteo Masi, you know. So my mm -hmm. question is, how can they achieve such a great bench press and such big weights? Uh, not being yeah. as big as you, but being smaller than you. How, how, yeah. you, how your weights can be comparised, uh, even if they are not as big as you, and uh, even if they don't have such a small rung? Mm -hmm. What's your opinion about that? Oh, it's genetic. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, it's genetic, but uh, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say it's genetic. Like, uh, they are really someone else, like for bench press. Like, they are, you know, they are meant to be bench press, naturally. <laughs> but it, it, it's, I. <clears throat> I have spent a lot of time with them, and like you know, we practice together, and we change or the information together. But the conclusion is we have a different way for bench press, and the, like uh, what they think about bench press is what 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 important for the bench press is very different from me, from mine. So I can not really, I can't really say correctly, but since Kodama has a lot of injuries on his whole body, like he has, um, he has problem on shoulders, and he has problem on neck or low back. So that keeps him away from a normal bench press. So he, created his own way that nobody cannot mimic. So, and then my, with my point of view, Kodama-san Kodama -san <laughs> is trying to bench press without his muscle. He is really focusing on the joint, and he moves the joints really properly so that he can get the big bench press. Unlike me, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of into my muscles or like my strength, but he doesn't focus on that. He just has to know how to move that joint while the bench press. And Fukushima is also, he has his unique way to achieve that big bench press. He doesn't have a wrist wrap, <laughs> even yes, for that yes. equipped bench press. And uh, he is really powerful, powerful man. I've never met before, like that guy. So, and uh, his, uh, his effort for like getting uh, flexibility or mobility or strength, for bench press is so amazing and it's been like almost 20 years of experience and um how say like he has his own gym too mm -hmm. so he spent a lot of time in the gym and doing bench press like crazy amount of bench press so that he achieved that goal it's it's almost like our effort in a different way it's like unbelievable unbelievable effort yeah <laughs> we, think the same. Are you, we are talking about the secret right yeah <laughs> i think there's a secret there's no secret 
<laughs> Bench a lot, more than the other do. See, some, sometimes you think that there's, there's some kind of secret between mm -hmm. these big numbers and this, yeah. the, this and that um, low body weight. So yeah. for us is unreal. It's something unreal for us. There, there's, there must be a secret beyond that. But as you are saying, there's no secret. You're just yeah. I, mean, I used to think of that too. Yeah, I used to think of that too. Then I ask them like, what was the secret of your bench press? And they say like, there's nothing. Like there is no secret. I can I can tell you everything I do. Then I found that you know yeah, it's literally there's no secret. Just they to bench a lot and a lot and over the over and over again, then they create their own way. And um, we particularly use the triceps and the chest for bench press, but they can use a lot of a lot of part of the most, uh, body, but, uh, from leg to their head, like <laughs> their faces. <laughs> you know, they have certain way. <laughs> These make it the even more unreal for us. <laughs> oh yeah, and then those like experiences and experiments of bench press gives them a certain face, like certain position of the jaws, or like maybe they're using their ears as well. <laughs> Crazy. I think so. I, I, I believe in that. Okay, okay. Thank you for okay. sharing with us these informations. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any 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 other question? <laughs> I have uh, just one question. Um, yeah. Do you think that military press has transferred to bench press, or the opposite? Yeah. Because when I, uh, when I improved my bench press from when I when I moved on the 93 kilos class in the training, I lifted uh, 190 kilos and my my military press uh, moved to from 90 kilos to 110 kilos without training it yeah, so yeah, what yeah. Do you think about the transfer yeah i think it's kind of, it's really related to bench press i mean i do military press uh, from time to time and i realized that my military press naturally goes up you know without doing anything like you know, when I, when my bench press is going up. And um, I think it's because you have to use your back or core or lower part of your body for pushing the bar, like vertical. Then you have to, in, you have to be in control, under control. It's, I think it's more difficult than bench press. I mean, military press is going pretty far, far away, but you have to control your like arms or fingers uh, to set the bar in the proper position. So it's mm, it's a different angle, but it's the same usage usage of your body. So I do military press for a certain time like now when i get stuck with my bench press i switch to military press then you know yeah once i get improved my military press and then go back to bench press so you don't train uh, uh, both at the same time bench press and the military no, press no. No. It, okay. i i do sometimes just for a conditioning conditioning so if I do a proper military press, so then I have no problem with my body. Just to check it. Yeah. And so for your shoulders, you use uh, accessory work instead of military press? No, it's, it's not military press. I do a lot of traps training or real delt for the sake of you know, getting my bench press improved or getting uh, avoid getting injury mm. but the shoulder is not supposed to do a big thing like it 
shoulders are used in your daily life. So it's kind of overused. So then if you add some more, then you're going to see your shoulders getting hard. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I have, I think, our last question. And this question is about the Japanese grip. So for, for Italian people, Japanese grip is something Finally. abstract. I mean, yeah. the first thing that we think about uh, the Japanese grip is when you put your index finger on the ring of the barbell and then you do you you turn your yeah. hand this way but as far as i concerned uh i think that um, uh, the issue of the i mean the the goal of the japanese grip uh, mm -hmm. instead of uh, let the the grip wider is something mm -hmm. more it's not just that it is uh, the concept to put the barbell not on the bone but a little bit further uh, to the finger in order to uh, stay more tucked but not with the arms with the with the shoulder blades in order to uh, depress them more i mean this is what uh, i believe this is what i think yeah. of that seeing the mm -hmm. Japanese bench presser, but now that I have the chance to talk with the Japanese bench presser, I really would like the, to know what the Japanese yeah. grip is all about. Yeah, uh, I've seen a lot of people just grab the bar and then, you know, just lower the bar. Uh, so, that's what I call technique, you know. Uh, objectively, 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 doing what? Uh, it it's constructive explanation. So the shoulder blade should be depressed. So then your arm is externally rotated. Then your pronation pronator is going like this. So. To, in order to grab the bar properly, then once you want to get uh, your range of motion really short, you have to grab the bar more wide, like wider, mm -hmm. and that finger creates that you know grip width wider, and uh, again, and also, it gives you a lot more uh, shoulder blade depressed, so that creates a bigger arch. Then you know all kinds of movement is for like to shorten the range of motion. Okay. And uh, that Japanese grip, Japanese grip is very weird expression for me. It it should be it should be done for by everybody, everybody. Like, especially for wide grip bench pressers. And uh, <laughs> this is so exaggerated, but still it, it doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, it obeys the rule as long as your fingers is on the ring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's ふうなんて。ね。ふうか、頑張って。ちょっと待って。ああ、ちょっと。ちょっと。その、こう、ふうす、ふうするってなのか。ちょっと、ふうしちゃう。ワンモーメント。it's a tool. It's a tool. Come to help you. It's a tool. Yeah. Okay. Helpful tool. It's a helpful tool yeah. to create that shorter range of motion. And um, it's typically uh, done by uh, Japanese lifters. And um, 
and then we we are short you know, at least shorter than european people so it, it's very it, there is a lot of benefit to short range of motion in, in short range of motion so and then it requires not a lot of muscle strength so, how to say it's kind of related to Udo. Udo boy. It's, it's more of a mentality yeah it's more of a mentality, of a mentality feeling yeah, yeah. feeling yeah. Mm. okay 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 thank you so much uh yusuke i think we are out of time but surely not out of questions so i hope uh we're gonna have another chat one day yeah yeah i, I really hope to have another chance to thank you it was a such thank a you. great honor and pleasure to have you on our screens and i hope it will be the same thing for all the people that follows our channel so thank you for being here with us and have you a great day thank you so much uh, thank you so thank much you. bye bye have a good day bye have a good day. Bye. thank you bye, bye. thank you thank bye. you bye.